someone once said that it takes 30 days to make or break a habit. And when they challenged that and said, show me the research, no one could come up with the research. So they did their own research. And the end result was the, the average time to make or break a habit is 66 days. Good Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Weekly Wassel. I am your host, Aha. Today, joined from now across the east side of the world. So last week, we were on the west side, and now we're on the east side. We are in the land down under in Australia with our good friend, Les. Les, it is Z with an S, though. I would love to hear that story first. But Les is here. He's going to talk us uh, through time management, and he has his book that I would love to discuss a little bit about. So without any further ado, Les, why the S? It's from my uncle, actually. It's great to be here. It's um, <laughs> lovely to have the conversation. And my my parents had an uncle, Leslie, L-E-S-L-I-E. -E. So it's very English. So in having an English name, they went, let's take his name and give it to our baby. So it became Leslie. So that's where that comes from. So when it's abbreviated to just Les, from the other part of the world, they go, oh, let's call him less. And I'm going, I'm not less, I'm more. So ah. if I, to get to get that corrected, all I need to go is my name is Leslie. And they go, ah, Leslie, because she can't go Leslie. Yeah, you can't go Leslie. No, that completely makes sense. <laughs> I was also thinking, I've never heard the name Les, but Leslie also has L-E-S. Yeah, it's, it, it suddenly clicks. <laughs> so that's good. Sorry to directly start that way, but how are you doing? How is it in I'm, the land down under? I'm really good. Um, just spent half the night in hospital with my son, who um, is in a fair bit of pain, and we weren't seen to, mm. so we went home. And um, so I'll get off this one and, and check in with him to make sure he's okay. And it's okay. It's been going on for a couple of days now, so it's not a matter okay. of um, he's lost a leg at all. So it's all good. Yeah, all good, all good. Nothing that serious. No. All right, perfect. That's that's okay. At least we can have a a guilt free conversation then, Indeed. because I also became a recent parent, uh, four months old. So I I, yeah, I don't know how I would feel if my child would be in the hospital. So I already felt guilt when I when I heard you say it. So I was like, oh no, we have to fix this now. But thankfully, all good. All good. Thankfully, all good. All good. Great. So, let's tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my, my passion is productivity and time management, but I have a background in, um, a whole range of things that came out of personal development. And, uh, we were talking, uh, just previously about me coming out of Tasmania and, um, I was working in health and fitness and in working in health and fitness, my boss said, you need to come over from Tasmania to the mainland, which is mainland Australia. And we ended up in Sydney. And him and another gentleman did a personal development course. And in that personal development course, there was a time management session. And they said, you need to come and do this course. And I went, really? Do I really need to do this? Re really? They, no, you really need to do this course. So I, it was a six-day personal development training and and I really got to know who I, who I was, how I ticked, and uh, what made, what worked, what didn't work, um, how I was operating in the world. And then on the back end of that, there was this time management, three day, well two and a half days, and um, the same presenter was doing this time management session, and it really revolutionised my world. I went from what I call drifting Dennis to someone who was goal directed i was achieving what i wanted to achieve i had systems i had plans and most of all i had goals and i'll just take you back ever so slightly when i was i got out of um, high school the gentleman uh, who i went into the hotel game my dad was in the hotel game and he said don't whatever you do don't go into the hotel game and i went straight into the hotel game i was a porter and the gentleman that was uh, my boss, Mr. Finney, Mr. Finney sat me down at his desk, big desk, dark office, mood lighting. And he said, Les, get goals. 
short-term goals, medium-term goals, long-term goals. Get goals, Les, get goals. And I left that meeting going, what is he talking about? What are goals? I don't understand. This doesn't make any sense. It just, it was foreign language to me. And come full circle X amount of years later, someone said you need to, to have some goals and here's a way to achieve your goals. And it did. It changed my life. So I've been using the same system now for over 30 years and uh, achieving some, some what I believe my goals, achieving them as opposed to I'm not achieving what I want in my life. I'm achieving what I want in my life. So it's already a good start. Uh, you have uh, built a system over 30 years, thanks to really good role models at a young age. Uh, I think it's a privilege in that sense, because uh, like me, for example, I never had a really good uh, role model. Uh, my dad was the best person in my life, but he was not really goal oriented, right? He was uh, getting by. It's a cultural difference. He was all about putting bread on the table. That's his goal. That's his work. And then he can just sit around, watch TV the whole day and relax and earn the, the relaxation that he gets. So I was always a bit more active. My wife says I actually have ADHD. I did not get diagnosed, to be honest. And I do, I, I am scared because I try new things all the time. I want to try things. Uh, I come from the world of Agile. I do not know if you know the world of Agile. Yeah. So just to explain to you, and of course, the mostly the audience, uh, Agile is a project management framework that works on the concept of continuous improvement, right? So the concept is the same. You break everything down to uh, very simple things we learn in productivity and time management as well. You break it down into smaller chunks and try to deliver as fast as you can so that you don't really start with the project, a lot of documentation. And by the end of six months, you go back and see, oh, shit, this is not what we wanted. So, you know, like it, you break it down. So uh, I try to do a lot of these things. So in that world of Agile, there's a very really famous thing uh, an Agile coach told me. He says, stop starting and start finishing. And that really, really resonated with me because I love, I, Leslie, I can't tell you, I love doing new things, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I hate finishing them. I cannot, I cannot go in for the long haul. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why we generally fail at reaching our goals and where time management comes into play? That's such a big question. Such a big question. Why do we fail with the goals? There's so many parts to that, but let me just take one step back with what you just said. I have a part in, um, I have a coaching practice. Uh, I have a time management practice, coaching practice. And in the coaching practice, I talk about, are you a starter? Are you a continuer? Or are you a finisher? Because there are people that love to start things ahead. Not that he is one of them but I think he is. He's a starter. So given that, there are people that love to start and then they get through and they go, okay, what else can I start? Oh, don't worry about finish. Let me give you something. So what's that shiny bright object over there? Let me go for that. Oh, look, a butterfly and I'll go for that, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I believe that there's, um, because I'm a coach, surround yourself with people that enable you to um, – live the best life that you can and highlight your strengths, but also help you with those weaknesses. So if you and I were in a, in a, um, a coaching session, I'd be going, how can I help you finish that task or that project? And if it's not you, then who's around you that can finish that task for you and you become a part of the team that starts things and other people finish it. So, from a team perspective, that's very, very uh, helpful. From a personal perspective, when it comes to goals, you've got to look at, are they rooted in something that you really, 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 really want to do? Because if you're passionate about it, you will make that thing happen no matter what. The reason that most people have the January syndrome of New Year's Eve resolutions, New Year's resolutions, is because they're not they're not rooted in what they really want, or it gets too hard, or I don't really care, or I don't have any accountability. Nobody knows. So if I stop it, it's okay because nobody knows. And and, and that's what happens. It's like, nah, pfft, who cares? Doesn't matter. Whereas if you say, I, I, I had you and I, let's go to the gym every day for January. Guess what? I'm not going to let you down 
and you're probably not going to let me down. So in that accountability, we help each other do what we said we were going to do and create the fitness that we want over the time of January. And we get to the end and go, how was that? Do we want to do it another month? Let's reassess, et cetera, et cetera. So goals need to be directed into things that really mean something to you. They need to be like, for me, it's got to be aligned with your purpose. Now, this is a very big, deep subject. Like what's your purpose for being on the planet? But it's a great one when you go, why, like, for example, let's go into coaching mode. I had, why do you do this podcast? Well, I, I do it for this, this, and this. Yeah, I understand that. But why this, this, and this? Well, I want to do this, this, and this, or get this result. Yeah, but why do you want to do that? And you break it down and down and down and down. Five and ways, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you get to that thing of why you do what you do. And yeah. when, I, when I discovered that, I was absolutely blown away. I was doing a, a, a very short, I think it was a two-hour session with a guy, and he said, oh, I've got this one-page plan, one-page business plan, and in the one-page plan had a piece on, on uh, purpose. And I've gone, hmm, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that in my two hours. But I came home and said to my wife, on Saturday morning, we're going to go out for breakfast, and I want you to ask me the question of why I do what I do. And when she did that, I gave an answer and she said, yeah, I understand that, but why that? And tell me more about that and why that? And we got to the bottom and my purpose is to bring life. My purpose is to bring Elaborate. life. So it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's like I leave, I get out of bed. Well, I, I talk about what's the purpose and that drives you getting out of bed. So I go, can I bring life to people staying in bed? Well, I can bring it to me, but I can't bring it to the world. So you need to get out of bed, Les, let's go. So I'm able to jump out of bed and, and bring life to, well, I've got a coffee shop and I've got my coaching and I've got, oh. um, I've got people that I meet in the street and I go for a walk and it's like bringing life. So it's, it, it's an all encompassing and it drives me. Uh, it's like, and I mean this in the most positive way possible, uh, because I'm so awe inspired. But if he's like, I'm looking at uh, myself a couple of decades down the road, because I would love to open up a restaurant and do something along those lines. And I have myself an agile coaching practice, right? So I see, I see this, and I see go like, okay, is it less, is this you? Is is this time traveling? What what is happening here? Because all I see is is myself in the future, and if I get to be half as good at time management as you are, I think I'll be double happy <laughs> for, for where I am standing right now. So already we're at a good start. I get your purpose and I get that you can build goals as much as you can. But if you if they don't align with your purpose, if you do not have accountability, it is going to be difficult. And you're right. It's New Year season. We're hitting uh, we're in the midst of December right now. Right. So people are getting going, getting up and already dusting off their gym clothes and shoes and, and signing up for another yearly subscription at 25 percent discount because they know they're going to go every week to the gym. So we have accountability. We have purpose. You wrote a book about time management. I want to know what, what does that book say in building these things in help, helping people achieve their uh, their goals of New Year's or whatever. Again, the the book is the A to Z of being more productive, and it's called Get Back an Hour in Every Day. So that's my promise. You get the book, you get will get back an hour in every day, and it's a it's a real coffee table book as opposed to an instruction manual. It's not a do this, then do this, then do this. I remember I was invited onto a podcast and I, and I said to the woman prior, I said, I've got a book, I'll send it to you. And, and her immediate reaction was, oh, no, not another time management book. Oh, no, 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 no. And when she got it, just like you've got the book, um, when she got it, she went, oh, I love this. I love this. It's so practical. It's so, it's so, it's so good. I like it a lot. And um, she got on the podcast and she said, ladies and gentlemen, this is no ordinary time management uh, book. This is really well written because it's, it has uh, the A to Z of how to be more productive. So you can pick it up and go, hmm, procrastination. What does Les say about procrastination or hmm, meetings? What does Les say about meetings? And you're getting not only the A to Z, but 
on every second page, you're getting a quote that has a, a picture, so a picture quote. And it, in regards to productivity, it's in about it's about time management, it's about life. And therefore, when I say it's a coffee table book, it's not something you'd sit down and go, okay, let me walk, work through this course. It's more an opportunity in life if you have the awareness of, I'm doing this behavior and it's not working for me. How do I fix that? Les, what have you got to say? And you can flick through the book and at any page you can get something from it. I I saw the book myself, as you said, and I loved it. I loved the outline of it. I loved the, the aesthetics of it. Usually the books I read are nonfiction and it's pages full of text and text and text, right? And uh, at a moment you just get burnt out. There's no color. There is no feeling. And here on every second page, there's this bright picture with a wonderful quote on it that makes you feel like, you know what? I, I am excited about something. So I really, really love the allure. But what I would want to be, I'm really curious about is how did you come across this concept? First, the concept of A to Z. And second, this concept of picture on every second. Where did it come from? It was a, um, here in um, Australia, bottom half um, is a state called Victoria and then a little town outside of Melbourne. Melbourne's the capital of Victoria, a little town called Geelong. And Geelong have a small business festival. And one year I went to the small business festival and listened to a lady talk about Instagram and how to do Instagram. And I went, I'm going to learn how to do Instagram. And I had no idea how to do Instagram. And, it, and I actually looked at it the other day and saw my first post from that meeting. And I went, hmm, that's interesting. And then from there, I I started on a journey of putting posts on Instagram along those lines of productivity and time management. So I'd find a picture and I go, that is a relevant picture. And I'd grab a quote, that's a relevant quote. And I'd put the two together and I'd put it up on Instagram. So if you wanted to, to check those out, it's on Time Lord Les. So T I M E L O R D. L-E-S, Time Lord Les. Yes, so we'll add that to the show notes. Yep, Time Lord Les yeah. on uh, Instagram. So once I had those, I went, hmm, and I was in a coaching session next door, and the woman said, you know, you have enough material to write a book. And I went, no, I don't. And my wife went, yes, you do. And I went, and of course, I, I, I'm in circles of people that if someone gives you a challenge, you don't walk away, you pick it up. I went, okay, 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 fine. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Within 12 months, I'll have a manuscript. So that was my commitment. And 12 months later, I had a manuscript. And what I did was every day I would put pen to paper. And for the A to Z, the concept came out of someone else did one on customer service as A to Z of customer service. And I went, well, yes, I can do customer service training. That's in my blood. However, I need to do one as an A to Z of productivity and time management. So let's let's just go through the alphabet, shall we? And and find out what what words would be A or attitude, um, avoidance, um, awareness, uh, and then and you move on and you go. Let's go to B or B has uh, brainstorming and breaks and busy. Or let's go to calendar checklists choice, clarity, and it just went on and on and on. Once I had the word, I then from the word and went, okay, what does that mean in regards to time management? So I extrapolated the word and went, okay, I've got the word, I've got what it means, and I've got, okay, what's the quote that I'm going to put on that? So I then went to a designer and I went, I've got all the words, I've got all the A to Z, I've got all of these. Can you put it into a format where you've got on the left-hand side, the A to Z, and on the right-hand side, a picture quote? And he went, yep. And he presented it back to me and and the book became a book. So I, I really love the idea, uh, especially the idea of giving people an hour every day and that in this day and age, it's so difficult that you're working, working, or you're watching TV mindlessly. The The shows are getting longer and longer on Netflix, right? So you don't even know an hours are gone. So it's not just about doing inefficiency there, right, in your work, but also inefficiency generally in your life. Now, this question comes from 
my own personal experience of being productive but my wife is uh, a bit on the uh, edge of of my productivity she's like it's great you can do it but don't you think you're overdoing it right you pl- plan everything down to the thing that every day you have a planner uh, by the way this is really gorgeous thing i do not know if you know about this the remarkable it's it's a gorgeous planner i use it every day well i try to and i mess up that's, that's but that's going to be straight down the line but every day fill it in write things down write my goals write my uh, to dos do them strike it off and then go i even plan my hours of gaming sometimes i play a lot of video games i go like you know what between 7 to 8 or 8 to 9 i'm going to play a game every day from 9 to 10 i'm going to spend one hour with my wife watch some tv because i don't like watching too much tv 10 to 11 we read some books together 11 my night routine starts sometimes it feels like i'm in a factory and she goes like why do you live this where where is the the spontaneity where is where is the the living of it what are your thoughts on that i find that spontaneity spontaneity comes out of my ability to plan so when i have the plan i don't have to worry <laughs> i don't have to worry yeah. so i've got that set i'm not having to worry about what i need to do it's already set so once i've got that i go oh i could do that or i oh i've got a great idea so the spontane it's like if and one of the things that i tell people is don't make your calendar back to back to back to back to back to back don't do that allow the gaps make sure that you allow the gaps because the the gaps enable people to drop in and stuff to happen and the brown smelly stuff to hit the round twirly thing that's shit that's a, a shit to hit the fan um that that sort of thing <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i'm sorry to stop you there but that was amazing is that an australian thing or is that just a les thing <laughs> no it's an australian thing no one wants to shit to hit the fan but but it happens you going through you going through life and then it just it explodes and you go i didn't plan for this and the easiest way to do that is to have gaps in between the the stuff that you're doing so that it enables you to breathe it enables you to live it enables you to reach out and and hug your wife or um have a coffee with someone or a tea or a chai or a latte whatever it might be have a water have a walk those sorts of things so it enables you to have the the life in between the doing and the reason that you and I do goals is that we are goal oriented we are goal orientated we are we are heading towards something and we put that down on paper i'm listening to a series at the moment by brian tracy called the psychology of achievement and i'm this is ages old it's just it's decades old but it's so true it's it doesn't lose any uh any gold in it whatsoever by being old i i really like it and i'm I'm looking at the sorts of things that um particularly coming up to this time of year where we're about to reset our goals for the for the next year and and writing them down and making them smart as in specific measurable attainable realistic and time framed and those sorts of things even though I know them now I didn't didn't know them when Mr Finney told me back in the day they are they are fundamental and when you do them they create results just the process of writing your goals down is a is a um a, an opportunity to move you towards what it is that you're after as opposed to being like me before i did my personal i called myself drifting dennis because i didn't have any purpose i wasn't achieving anything um you'll see the story in the in the book about how i drifted and it's all about drinking with my mates and chasing girls and I don't do that anymore no I have a wife I have children it's all good <laughs> so now the drifting dennis days are over basically exactly but here I would like to challenge you a little bit I love the concept as you said we both are the same right in that sense we're goal oriented we believe I'm assuming here a little bit for you but we believe we believe that the purpose and a life well lived is like a life of continuous improvement right you want to keep moving a little bit you don't want to sit still 
I do not like the fact when people I, I say this and and the thing that comes into my mind is like if you if you're standing still you're going backwards or if you're not moving you're dead you know those kind of things so I do get the sentiment what people on the other side of the aisle cha challenge me about is like but but why what what is so wrong with being a drifting tennis I'm enjoying my life. I'm fulfilling my responsibilities. I have a house over my head. I have uh, people I'm I'm feeding uh, uh, feeding mouths. I'm, I'm I'm doing good. I'm doing as much as I want to do. Why is that a problem? Not a problem, but there are choices. And I'm a man of faith. So based on that, I'm going, how can I live my faith out for the betterment of the people around me? So therefore, my gift and that's another story. What's your gift? What's the gift that you bring to the world? And we can go into that at another podcast. But in having the understanding of what your gift is and that you have a mission on the planet to deliver that in some way, the people that come to me and ask me that question of what's so wrong with sitting back and relaxing and, and not doing anything apart from meeting my obligations is if that gift inside of you if you got to the age of 95 and looked back what would you have really been a disappointment if you never achieved and people go oh i should have written that book or oh i should have started that business or oh, i should have it's like well are you doing that now rather than waiting to then actually do it now and bring that gift forward into the world to create more of what it is that people want or need and you're the person that's delivering it um you said something earlier you're either the quote that came was you're either green and growing or ripe and rotting and for me it's it's a continuous improvement opportunity i don't think i didn't do university i i've trained in uni universities i've actually trained people and and done that, but I, I'm not a university graduate. And yet, I'm continuously doing courses and reading books and bettering myself because I can pass that on. So I'm listening to podcasts, I'm, I'm watching YouTube videos, specifically because in my coaching practice, people are looking to me to go, is there anything that I should know? And I go, well, actually, you, you're down that avenue. And I read something about that avenue just yesterday and here's what i learned and they go wow that's awesome i can use that that is so interesting i also love to read listen and watch a lot in terms of in terms of gaining new things so before i have some questions uh, about what you said but before we even move on i would really am interested in what do you listen watch and read every now and then is there any one youtube video one podcast or one book that you can recommend for the listeners um, the, the book would have to be Get Back an Hour and Every Day by Leth Watson. But apart from that, um, uh, no, I, I, I really, I don't have specifics. Um, I'm very general in that regard. So I'm encouraging people to look into those areas. It's like if you were to go to a, a business shelf at a bookstore, what jumps off the shelf based on where you are at the moment that you could go, I could read that. That looks really interesting. So that's the reading side of things. Ask the people around you, if you had a mentor or a coach, say, what would you recommend that I read? And have them look at um, the, the uh, give you suggestions as to what you could read. What podcasts are you listening to, coach, or good friends around you, business associates? What are you listening to at the moment? And they can give you stuff. Because what relates to me may not necessarily relate to you, unless, of course, it does. But it, it's a matter of asking the question, what are you listening to? What are you listening to? What are you listening to? And then from there, you have the opportunity of the second greatest search engine happens to be YouTube. So you come up with the thing of, okay, I'm currently doing Brian Tracy, the psychology of achievement. And if I put that into YouTube, I'd be able to get the the visual and the YouTube videos on the psychology of achievement by Brian Tracy. So any topic. So rather than just Google it, you could YouTube it and you find visual education enabling you to go further and do more just because you stuck it into a search engine. 
I hear advices, but I do not hear a recommendation yet. <laughs> okay, so I've got a couple here. I'm just going to grab them. All right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. So I, I I listened to this guy speak recently. Um, no, not recently. A couple of years ago, and his name is Dr. John DiMartini, and he has the values factor. And yeah. I heard him speak and I went, that man can deliver a message that's so on point. So when I found out about it, I rang the library and they said, oh, yes, we've got that book. We're about to throw it out. And I went, no, you're not. Oh, it's it's soiled. It's got a stain on it. I said, I don't care. I want that book. So The Values Factor by Dr. D, John D. Martini. So that's a yeah. really, 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 really good one. And um, again, comes from purpose and value. And just recently, I was um, again listening to a podcast, and someone talked about Jim Collins and and Bill La- Lazia, and it was BE two point zero, turning your business into enduring an enduring great company. So BE two point zero, and um, I I listened to the book and went. That is so good. I must have the hard copy. So once I got the hard copy, I went through and I started to uh, highlight all of these just nuggets of gold. So uh, yeah. again, just just two of the relevant ones. I've got a I've got a bookshelf over here that has a <laughs> stack of books on it. And um, that's ex- apart, exactly yeah. Apart yeah, from mine, that's exactly it, it's just two. Yeah, but that's exactly why I, I had to stop you and ask you for for more ed- recommendations because I feel like there is a lot more that I can and, and everyone can learn from this. So thank you so much for sharing. I think that was wonderful. But still recommendation number one, even for me, from me, would still be getting back an hour every day by Les Watson, right? That's always going to be number one. So from there on, let's move on to your coaching practice. So you have a coffee shop. But you also have a coaching practice. What is going on there? The, uh, I want to listen to the coffee shop first. <laughs> when I said a coffee shop, I could go to the coffee shop. So I have a have a local coffee shop down the road. Oh my! I, I, I was here thinking... every day, every day. So um, I have a great relationship with the staff and the owner and the barista. So it's like a second family. So rather than staying here, I'll go. Well, after this podcast, I'll go and get a coffee. And I'll go down and I'll have a conversation. And it's about everything. It's about life. It's about it's about what, what our passions are. It's about families. It's about living. And it's it's rich. It's that thing of not transactional. It's not a matter of walking up, I'll have a coffee, please. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye. It's um, how's your wife and how's how's your son and how's your, your new daughter and and He'll go, what, what are you doing today? And where are you today? And and tell us about that. How's your wife? And what happened to your son being in hospital? And let's and it's rich. It's really rich. So it's it's yeah. a matter of the passion of life and the richness of life and bringing life isn't about transaction. It's about being with people and loving people and enjoying people as opposed to it just being a transaction and not knowing the people in your life. That's the coffee shop, and then there's a supermarket within 50 metres or 50 yards of the coffee shop, and I know half the staff. Why? Because it's not a matter of a transaction and not knowing these people. I'm down there all the time, so I know their names, and they know me. This is very, very interesting. So first, I assume you own a coffee shop, so that that is cleared out that that's not the case. (laughs) I was so excited about it, but it's okay. We park that aside. I do want to talk about the coaching point, but before we do that, uh, I do want to know this because a lot of people talk to me about this. I was recently hosting a meetup here in in my city in Eindhoven, and uh, I was talking to this this amazing lady. She was telling me that uh, she she goes to a lot of meetups. She has a very happening life. And I said, how is that possible? She's like, I just go talk to people. And I'm like, how do you do that? Now, people look at me, Les, uh, being having a podcast and the way I talk and everything, they go like, well, it must be very easy for you as well. Ahad. It feels like you you're, 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 you're talk normally. I'm like, yeah, but I, for the life of me, I cannot go to a random person and just start talking out of nowhere. You said the example of a supermarket. My supermarket is uh, 50 meters down from here. 
100 meters max, I think a five minute walk, right? And there I see the same people again and again, every time, because they're working there. I don't know their names. Max, I say is hello, have a nice weekend. No, how are you? No, nothing. And you know why? Because it's also, I think, a cultural thing. Unless uh, I've heard about Australians uh, because a lot of my friends studied in Australia when they were young. So they told me it's, it's a cultural thing that you guys, small talk is is more deeper talk. That if, even if you're on the streets, you talk to someone, the person will tell you their feelings. Well, on the on the west side of the world and even in, in our uh, our home, home country of, of Pakistan, small talk was reserved for small talk. If you want to have deeper talks, you go to chai sessions and then you cry about it there or you go meet family or something. You know, it's it's, it's a reserved place. So when you're talking on the streets, you just be like, hello, hello, how are you, how are you? So besides the natural limit of it, how do you make it happen less? Because I really want to learn this. I, everyone keeps telling me this and I'm like, you know what? I am curious. So maybe you want to share a little bit on that. Okay. And, and you hit on it in the second last statement, that is you're curious. And if you're curious that it's not about you, it's about the other person. So I had, tell me about, tell me about your day. How's your week been? How's your day today? How's it going? And, and just being curious about other people is really easy. Uh, even the checkout, the person at the supermarket that uh, on the register, and it's like, how's your day going? And they go, someone cares about me. I, it's going really well. And I've, over time, you see the same person. You go, so um, what did you do on the weekend? Oh, I did this, this, and this. And then the next week, you can go, are you still doing that thing, that this, this, and this? And they go, yeah, did it the weekend, and it was wonderful. So you're, you're creating a tapestry of conversation that comes out of being interested in other people as opposed to me coming out and talking all about me, all about me, all about me, all about me. They don't care about me. They care about themselves. So if you can just ask the question, I went to a networking event last night and I had a, a lovely time, just an absolutely delightful time. So I caught up with a, a, so many different people they hadn't seen for a while. And yet there were people there that I hadn't met. And I said, so what do you do? And tell me more about that. And wow, that sounds really interesting. How did you get into that? Just being interested in other people takes the angst out of networking. It's just a matter of being interested in other people. You're like the fifth bazillion person who's told me this, that it's it's, it's all about being curious. Ahad. But I'm telling you, it's not that easy. It's, it's, it's not that easy. I go up to a person and I go like, oh, how, was, how was your day? They go like, oh, good, good. That's it. That's it. I don't get anything after that. And I'm like, I'm trying to thread the needle, but there's nothing there. What you said, what I picked up on right now in your statements, what you said was time, right? You go once, you just ask, how are you? See your day. They might not reply. They might reply coldly, but then you go again the next day or the next week and then you ask again. And then the next week and you ask again. So I think that element is very, very important because that, that, consistency of it breeds trust that they go like this person is asking me for like 10 times and and their name if you can find out their name if you can call them by name it's the sweetest word in the english language and when i say english my language in their language is their name and they get called their name from birth so it's a really sweet name and when it, and when it's called out in a room they go hold on, uh, that's my name. So when you talk to someone and use their name, we're getting completely off the trap, the topic of time management, but that's beside the point. We're having fun. Stop it. Um, it it's, it's really a connection of, uh, they're not talking about anybody and they're not talking to anybody. They're talking to me and using my name. Therefore, they're interested in me. There's a, a great saying that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's a matter of, do you care about the people that you're interacting with? Because if you care about them and you find out their name, then it goes a long way to relationship and life is about relationship. It's not about a silo. It's not about staying in on your own. It's about doing the tapestry of life and being with other people. 
I really, really like that. I will take these learnings, put it in my head, lock it, and hopefully in my next visit to, to the supermarket, I will ask them their name. I will check out their name tag. I will ask them how their day was. I'll see if that works. And I will keep you posted, Les, awesome. if, it, if it works or not. But yes, moving back to the conversation, you have a coaching practice and that coaching practice is all about time management or not. It started out of co um, out of time management. So the get more time is the um, productivity and time management business. And then during COVID, it was what's in your hand. And what was in my hand was um, a program that I ran 30 years ago in Sydney. And I went, I could put that online. I could do that on Facebook. So I, I put it out to people. I'm going to do this creating success program. Would you like to join? And I got a, a stack of people came and I went, well, that went well, I'll do it again. And I did five of them during the year of COVID. And, and then at the end of these pieces, they, they'd say, well, what's next? And I went, well, coaching. And they went, okay, sign me up. And the creating success coaching came out of COVID. Um, and it's for small business. It's for entrepreneurs. It's for solopreneurs. It's for small business up to say five, 10 people that are staff and it has 12 modules. Um, and in that there are a hundred lessons in those 12 modules. So uh, it enables the individual to really dig into their, their entrepreneurial journey or their business journey and get some solid foundations on how to, create the business that they want as opposed to well i've put out when we would use this thing you put out your shingle in other words put out your sign i'm now in business but i don't know what i'm doing and that's why coaching helps because someone comes along and goes as you say les you've got a couple of years on me um, um give me some of that wisdom and that's what coaching is having someone who has the wisdom that's been there done that i was in a um a business the other day and we finished um, a series of leadership trainings and the the gentleman said thank you for the 60 years of research that you brought to the table so that we didn't have to do the mistakes that you made you brought the learning and the lessons so that we don't have to make those mistakes ourselves and i went oh that's really nice and a nice way of putting it so so i i always say surround yourself with people that are smarter than you if you're the smartest person in, in the room, you're in the wrong room. And, and it sounds really weird, but it's true. It's like be around people that can educate you. Be around people that you can learn from and garner from and, and take the knowledge that they have and use that in your life. No, I, I think I 100% agree because this is the biggest struggle people usually have. We have this... Uh, misconception that we know everything, like we have the misconception that we have a lot of time, right? This is the problem. Time is finite. So is your mental resources. So you need to use them strategically. And if you have people around you who are more different and more knowledgeable and more experienced than you, you can shave off a lot of that mental resource and time that goes into doing that thing yourself by just learning from them and, and getting a jump start of your career. So that brings me back to the book. I loved it. You, of course, love it. <laughs> Everyone who will read it will love it, right? But what makes the book special for me is how there's always a favorite passage of the author. So now, Les, what is your favorite A to Z moment of the book? Or what is your favorite quote? It wouldn't be the quote. There's so many. It's the, the book is full of quotes. So every second page has a quote. And they're, and they're really good quotes. The, the, the couple of key points out of the book um the first one would be what's your trusted system what's what's the the key methodology that you use to get stuff done and in australia we'd say get shit done so what do you use to get stuff done and and that can be paper based or app based it can be on your phone on your computer on a, a lap on a an ipad on a tablet it doesn't really matter what it is but do you use a system where you get it out of your head down somewhere and it does get done as opposed to, oh, ahead, it's around here somewhere. Um, it was on a, 
post-it note? No. On the back of an envelope? No. Um, oh, we were at a restaurant. It was on the on a napkin. No. Could be in a journal. No. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't find it. So that's not what you're after. What you're after is having a thought, putting it somewhere that you trust in a system so that as you go through your day, you go, what do I need to get done? There it is. What do I need to get done? There it is. And that can be anything. It can be a journal. It can be a planner. It can be a tablet. It can be your computer, as long as it works for you. If people have a phone on them for the majority of their life, therefore, a lot of people are putting it on their phone, enabling them to be productive at any point. So that's number one. And the other one would have to be the procrastination and getting over procrastination. And Mel, Mel Robbins talks about the five second rule where if you've never heard this story, she was in a, a slump in her life. And in being in the slump, she was missing the kids getting to the bus and missing their lunches and, and just staying in bed. And she was watching television one night and saw a rocket ship blast off and it went five, four, three, two, one. And the, the ship blasted off and she went, I could do that in the morning. I could actually say to myself, rather than hitting the snooze button and the snooze button and the snooze button, the snooze, she could go, as the alarm goes off, I could go five, four, three, two, one and launch out of bed. So the alarm goes off in the next day and she went, there it is. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. And she launched herself out of bed and went, wait a minute. It can't be that easy. And she did it the next day and then the next day and the next day and became an international speaker on this five second rule to make decisions and act on them. Because often we get stuck in the thinking. It's paralysis by analysis. So given that, it's a great way to go. If it's within your realm to be able to do it, it's in your integrity and it lines up with your goals and you can do it, why don't you do it? Why don't, why don't you just go ahead and do it and have the courage? And someone once said, I think it was out of um, the movie about the zoo, is that all you need is a, um, 10 seconds of insane courage. And most of us kind of don't. We just kind of wimp away and I go, no, no, no. Take it, take the bull by the horns and, and and be active and be courageous and see what can happen and you'll surprise yourself. Now I think procrastination is one of my biggest pet peeves. I, I as mentioned this, I have systems, uh, I have morning rituals, I have evening rituals, I have a lot of things. What I really loved was this breathing thing that you talked about, right? Breathing spaces in the middle, right at the start of the conversation. So this part, the last part of our conversation, I want to talk a little bit of practicality. So five second rule is an interesting practicality. Writing stuff down in a planner and whatever is a, is, is a good idea. So why don't we take some time right now to find good ideas, to beat procrastination and be able to, you know, basically enable a person to reaching their goals. So what other recommendations do you have in beating procrastination in, in setting your priorities straight? So you were saying planner, a tablet, a phone, but that's not enough, right? Even if you use the, the notes page on your phone, it can get messy, right? And then you're not keeping track of it. So anything around those areas that you think would really help us uh, get, get shit done? Yes, and, and, and start with the simple stuff. Start with the simple stuff. So one thing that we're talking about is have a system. So if you don't have a system, just start there, grab a system, and it can be as simple as a spiral-bound um, notebook and, and start from there, that you take that around with you, or it's your phone, or it's a tablet, whatever that might be, or a planner. So have a system and then work with the system. So people often ask me, what's the best app? And I go, the one that you use. Because people go, oh, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this. And, and then uh, they, they bounce from app to app and they never actually dig into one and give it enough time. Someone once said that it takes 30 days to make or break a habit. And when they challenged that and said, show me the research, no one could come up with the research. So they did their own research. And the end result was the, the average time to make or break a habit is 66 days. 
some as long as 250, some as short as 15. But for the, the general person, me being a general person, it probably takes two months. So given that, can you get into a routine? And if we were beside each other, um, living in the same city or working, I would go, ahead, let's do this together. Come on, let's do this together. Let's do this for two months so that we keep each other accountable and do the routines and the schedules for two months and see what happens. So it's not, it's not something you have to do on your own. I've got a, a model and it's an easy model. It's E, A, S and Y, E, A for external action because a lot of people have the thinking and they don't do the action. So I say, at least get into action, do something and you'll get the feedback. So that's the E, A. The S is support. Don't do it alone. Get people around you. Get a mentor, get a coach, get a trainer, get someone, even your best mate to hold you to account that enables you to progress with what it is you're after. And the last one is a huge one, and that's the yes or the internal focus. Because a lot of people go, well, this will never work for me. It will never work for me. It will never work for me. And guess what? It never works for them. It just doesn't. Why? Because they talk themselves out of it. And that's like whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. Because you're the one that's in control. And a lot of people, um, listening to Brian Tracy recently, a lot of people actually program themselves for success by what they think and what they say and what they listen to. And the end result is they create success. And you go, what's the difference between them and us is what you think and what you say. So if you want to change your world, change your thinking. If you want to change your world, change what you're saying to yourself. So is the cup half full or half empty? So those sorts of things. Is it going to be a good day? Because I get out of bed, maybe not today, but I get out of bed and go, woohoo, come on, let's go. I wonder what exciting things that's going to happen today because there's bound to be something amazing going to happen today. And every day something amazing happens. Now, I've got other people in my life that go, oh, no, that never happens to me. I get bad end of the stick and I'm, I've got all these bad people and, and my car breaks and this, that and the other. And I go, the difference is a whole lot of mental attitude and I just go, where? Car spots, bar, parking your car. People go, I can never find a parking spot. And I go, I can find a parking spot. I just go, where's my parking spot? And I get one every single time. And that's another story and it's a big story. But but know that your thinking matters. What you think about matters. So if you go, I'm always late, I'm always late, I'm always late, you will always be late. If you say, I hate Mondays, you will hate Mondays. It's, it's reaffirming. It's basically a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? When you believe it, you you unintentionally make it true. It's not like the universe makes it true. You make it true exactly. by your own actions. Yep. And and it's very, very interesting because uh, in my day jobs and wherever I am as a scrum master, what I do is the same thing. I wake up, I, I tell people, I meet my team and I believe a good team is a team that you know knows each other rather than just knows the work. So I always ask them, okay, what did you guys do yesterday? And did anyone do something interesting? And always in the first few weeks, Everyone is like, no, mm, nothing special, nothing special. And then I have to tell my stories to get people going. I'm like, this happened. You know what? Yesterday, I didn't sleep the whole night. They're okay. like, what? I'm like, yeah, my, my baby is going through a four-month regression. You're being interested in people. That's awesome. That, that's, that's the thing. You have to learn. I already learned from you, Les. <laughs> so I, I, I ask people, and I'm like, I, I didn't sleep the whole night. And uh, now I'm running on two hours of sleep and a lot of water to stay up and conduct this meeting. And they go like, what's so interesting about that? And I'm like, I'm like, that's the thing. You have to find your own interest. Mm -hmm. Make it interesting. You tell me you made pasta in the night. I'm going to ask you what kind of pasta. I can make it interesting. But I cannot make it interesting by that supermarket person because that's difficult. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. You can go, Les told me I can do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep reminding myself. Now, this, is, this has been wonderful. As we are closing in on our uh, final uh, 
up basically the the end game so we want to close this up a little bit so before we do that i want to know a little bit more about the book where is it available where can people get it so that we know it's it's still uh, there out to be purchased and uh, what about anything else from from your side that you want to share any links will you say will be added to the show notes so that people can reach out to you accordingly where can they find you and everything else to clo close of the session awesome so the the book is available on my website which is getmoretime.com.au so it's get g e t more m o r e time t i m e getmoretime.com.au and there's a store on there so it's forward slash store and you'll be able to get the book there you can get it either in the physical version and i'll send it anywhere in the world or i'll um, you can download it immediately and you can get it as an a an ebook or a pdf version so that's the book and that's available on my website getmoretime.com.au and i've got something that, like he's asking me to pay money well how about i give you something for free there's a um a landing page that I've got set up that you can download the 25 time tips for busy people, 25 time tips for busy people. And that's just getmoretime.com.au forward slash time tips. It'll be in the, in the show notes. So the time tips will as a PDF of 25 of those key uh, practical opportunities where you can put it into your life to get back that hour in every day and yes it's not the book it's just 25 whereas the the book has over over 90 opportunities to to learn how to get back the hour in every day and anyone can contact me on my website there's a, a get in contact you can download that you can buy the book or you can just reach out and go tell me more about this Liz, and we can have a conversation great now that i think that was it Thank you so much, Les, for your time. I hope you would have a wonderful start to your f Thursday morning in Australia, uh, Friday morning, Friday morning in Australia, right? Yep. Friday morning in Australia and have a wonderful day to the start of the weekend. I am curious to know what interesting thing you're going to do today. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's just going to be awesome. I've got a meeting in an hour's time. I've got, I'm going to go and get a new phone. I'll probably go and get a new laptop. I've got stuff happening. Oh. It's going to be awesome. And also you have to go to the coffee shop, exactly. get a coffee right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, now. Things, things are happening, right? That's so much good. Thank you so much, Les. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful time. You saw how excited was uh, I was. The book is called Get Back an Hour Every Day. Les Watson, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And talk to you later. Bye.